Okay, so um, Carmel, um, hi. Hello. Um, I'm going to be explaining to you why, why our estate agent is the estate agent that most landlords need to go with as opposed to any other estate agent. Um, and what I'm going to be taking you through is our rental market report that gets sent out to a landlord before we go on a market appraisal. Mm -hmm. um, and what our rental market appraisal report does is it assesses the property, um, that landlord's property, against our system to say what we can achieve in six different rental markets. Okay. So the first rental market that um, we, we, we assess the landlord's property is in the corporate relocations. Okay. Um, corporate relocations is basically, you know, you've got companies like HSBC, um, Santander, UBM, um, whatever like that, um, and they need to relocate their staff from abroad mm -hmm. or from um, within the UK to a specific part of um, the UK in order to be closer to a new company that's um, setting up. We have a lot of auditors that need to be close to sort of a, a, a bank or a company that they're assessing that need to you know, have a property and they need to audit from there. So corporate relocations, it can be families. It's just bringing someone that works within a company. A lot of the times with corporate relocation, the company pays on the behalf of their staff. Okay, that's good. Okay, so um, the report here is based on a property that we have in, um, in you have in Tooley Street, yep. um, and the rental um, value of that property is two thousand six hundred. It's a two bedroom with one bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, it's newly built, um, and in the corporate relocations um, market, we could achieve um, up to three thousand one hundred twenty pounds, oh, wow. where the property on a normal market rental would be about two thousand six hundred. Um, obviously, I've just assessed it against the system. The system says that we have about 1,400 clients, corporate clients, um, within that area that is looking for, um, the, for a property similar to, to that landlord. So the thing I would do is once I've got the video and done the market appraisal, I would go back to the system and then I would look for all those clients and be able to bring them to the landlord's property, um, as well as marketing the property on Rightmove and Zoopla and bringing other clients as well. Okay. Um, corporate relocations, um, it takes about seven days to averagely find a, 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 um, a, a tenant or a, a, a person for that property or applicant for the property. Okay, yeah. um, we also rent to businesses mm -hmm. as well. Um, so a business rental is basically if you have like a psychiatrist who wants to have a space to talk to their customer um, and they maybe live in the house, but they want to have a room where they can um, talk to a customer. Nowadays, you know, businesses are becoming very online and the need for a high street office is not as much as it used to be. So a lot of people rent um, properties, um, especially for properties, let's say in London or in the major cities that have business centers, um, you know, offices, um, restaurants attached to it, but they, but they, they, they rent the property um, so they can live there or they can just have their office there and have access to all the other facilities um, that, that come with it. Okay. So that is business um, rentals. It's just a company renting the property for the purpose of using it for an office. Okay. Um, most tenancies that would need to take place in that would be a company let. Um, but we can discuss that at another point. Okay. Yep. Um, so in this situation, the property is um, obviously valued at 2600 but um, you could receive up to three thousand three hundred and eighty pounds um, for month per month for for that, and it says that we have just under a thousand um, potential businesses um, that would be interested in a in a property in their local area. Um, and again, that takes about seven days for us to find someone to a uh, company to, to rent the property. Mm -hmm. um, next rental market we're in is holiday rentals. Okay. So um, that's obviously renting to companies like Ebb, renting it on. Uh, companies like Airbnb, Booking.com, um, The Telegraph, renting um, and um, home and away, companies like that. Okay. Um, and we pull it on with a couple of um, other rental agents that rent it as, you know, rent it as a holiday um, let on, on, the, on your behalf ultimately, or the, the landlord's behalf. Okay. Um, again, with rental rents, it's actually one of the, one of the highest paying. Um, you can get up to £3,640 a month. Um, from you know the normal market where it's like 2,600, mm -hmm. um, and rental lets is global, so you've just got 
you know, millions of people that, that want to be, especially if you've got a property in the city, in the city mm -hmm. that would like to be able to get access to that. So we'd put it on with um, Airbnb or Booking.com or whatever. Our company would manage the maintenance of that property. So getting cleaners out, our company would manage that, getting um, people to handle the keys and um, check um, people in, that, our company would take care of that. Mm -hmm. um, but it would have to be under a managed service. Okay, that's very good. Um, HMOs. Which is another rental market. Um, so a HMO, um, it's mainly for students and sharers. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of land, you know, there's a lot of laws and uh, rules that are coming up about um, being properly HMO compliant. So um, we would pay for the HMO as a company, mm -hmm. or the client would pay for the HMO on the behalf of the landlord. Um, that would affect the rental valuation. So on, on, on a HMO, where normally you would receive, let's say, 2,600 for your rent, um, we would probably offer a bit less. So it could be down to 2,300, 2,200, um, because we would take on the cost of the HMO. Obviously, we're putting more value into the landlord's property on a long-term basis. Um, but, you know, we would, you know, by taking on the cost of doing the HMO, the, the rental value might go down on a monthly basis but we would be putting value into their house on a long-term basis. There are scenarios where you could actually make more rent if the house is quite, you know, half done, mm -hmm. you know, and we need to just add little bits to make it, then you could still get above the rental market that you, you know, you would look for. But, you know, we would typically take on the cost and deal with the um, council on getting the house H mode. Okay. Um, so sorry, just to go back. So it's not really, yourselves or the client paying for the HMO license then is it if you're going to deduct the rent? Um, it's so the yeah it's not really ourselves or the client because we're going to deduct the rent but at the same time most landlords don't have the money to pay for the HMO license up front and okay. um, you know so if we were to rent the property to students or we were to rent the property to sharers mm -hmm. um, and the landlord would want to be able to have more value in the property in the long term and they don't have the money up front to do it then yeah we would take that cost on but it is a cost that we have to take on so yeah it would affect um, 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 the cost of the rent on a monthly basis so that's fair enough that's understandable yeah um, renting to the council um, with renting to council there's you know, it's not just the DS, it's not just DSS. Mm -hmm. um, there are uh, rented to disabled, which you make a lot, you know, make a lot more money than you would get with normal council deals. Um, rental to violent um, victim of violence, which they would pay more than the rental value. Renting to DSS, they generally pay less than you would normally get on the open market, mm -hmm. but because you know, rental prices are rising up so so high nowadays, and councils can't compete with the way that um, rental prices are rise, um, rising up. What they do is that they do schemes where they offer um, sort of lump sums of money up front to sort of convince you to bring your property to, to them. And sometimes, you know, these lump sums can really make, you know, rent into the council very, 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 very beneficial. So it's important to really speak to your agent um, to understand you know, go to the council, look at what they can achieve for your property, um, whether it's just normal DSS, whether it's renting to the disabled, whether it's renting to victims of violence, whatever. It's good to get your agent to go out and assess what the maximum rent they could get. Our system does sort of query um, a database that says, this is what we think we could achieve. But it's very important if you really want to get a proper valuation to, to speak to your um, um, lettings manager, and let them go and you know really find out what they could achieve on your behalf. Um, um, and we've got advanced rental, uh, my personal favourite. Um, advanced rental is where we pay the landlord's rent three, six months or 12 months in advance. It gives the landlord a lot of security um, over um, knowing that they don't have to worry about you know the rent for the next you know 12 months because they've got it. Yeah. Um, sometimes landlords want to do things to their house to um, to put more value, like do a loft or whatever and whatnot, and they need that upfront cash. Mm -hmm. So advanced rental was very good for that upfront cash. Um, but an advanced rental, you know, sometimes because it's been paid in advance, we do, you know, want to, you know, negotiate with the landlord. Sometimes a rent, negotiate the rent a little bit down um, to make it, you know, in our favour as well um, to, to do that up. Um, front rental. A lot of upfront rentals are situations where the um, landlord gives us the property over 12 months or 24 months or um, over two years, three years, four years, whatever, whatnot, and they want to um, have it with sharers or students. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so obviously, you know, depending on that type of deal, you really need to talk to your agent about how that will affect um, doing an advanced bank rental and where, pay, and where um, HMO in the property will have an effect on the average monthly rent. But really speak to your um, um, uh, manager, lettings manager, to really know how that will affect. But, you know, it brings a lot of security to a lot of landlords. It gives them that upfront cash to be able to inject into other things to really add that value into the property. So, you know, you know it has benefits. Sounds good. Yeah, so those are the six rental markets that we're in. Okay. Um, and um, in the report, it shows what um, is the uh, average monthly that we can achieve and the highest average mon monthly we can achieve. Mm -hmm. It talks about the number of clients that are interested as well. So it's something that is really important to go through um, with the landlord mm -hmm. and discuss and then find out what markets the landlord is happy to be in okay. so we can represent the landlord in the best possible way. Okay, so in regards to referencing, how do you guys deal with that? Well, we do use a third party company to check the credit um, of the tenant. Mm -hmm. um, we have an inside uh, department for referencing. Um, so as I said, we use a third party um, company to check for the, the, the tenant's credit. Um, check if they've got any adverse CCJs. Um, we go back three years to check about their credit history. Um, our, in, um, our internal department calls their um, where they work, um, but they don't sort of call the boss that they put on the reference the name. Yeah. They call through to the to to the HR department or to the get through to sort of the head office, mm -hmm. and then try and find that um, tenant um, going down that process. Okay. Obviously, you have smaller companies where you just have to get through to whoever the um, tenant has um, put on the reference. But ideally, they'll go through to the head office and, and, and go back. Something else that they do is um, we, we check the landlord um, uh, to make sure that, that uh, the landlord's reference. Mm -hmm. And that's very important to make sure that that landlord gives a good reference. So we check that. We also check the landlord's details that they put against um, um, certain databases to make sure that that landlord and the telephone number that they've given us is actually who's registered to the um, to who owns the house to make sure they're not giving us, you know, a family member or somebody like that. Um, so that's mainly what we check on the references. Okay, that's good. So you said you use a third party to do the checks. What company is that? Homelet. Homelet. Yeah. Okay. Is there a reason you just don't get them to do the whole reference or? Um, I find that, um, I'll be honest, um, because the rules came in where tenants couldn't, um, can't pay for, um, uh, don't have to pay for any fees, mm. referencing being one of those fees. Yeah. Um, and obviously it's very difficult sometimes to get the landlord to accept the cost of those fees. Mm -hmm. It's easier for us to pay for a credit check, which is, to be honest, cheaper, mm -hmm. and then and, and bring, in, bring into, the comp into our company um, people that can do the rest of the checks, because we need the administrators there in the company mm -hmm. anyway. Um, I guess within the next two years, we want to be able to do everything in-house so you know, we can take responsibility for uh, making sure that the tenants that are going through the system are good quality. You know, it's, it's, it's personal to us to make sure that these tenants are good quality. We take a lot of properties ourselves um, from landlords for, you know, two, three, up to 25 years. We need to make sure that those, those tenants are, are secure. Also, we do a lot of room lets and um, the referencing companies do not insure room lets. Um, so home let does not insure room lets, they, they insure whole lets. Um, and we, within the next two years, want to be sort of uh, able to insure our own tenants. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to build up a certain amount of skill and experience to be able to um, be able to do that. So within the next two years, we're hoping that we can insure not just our whole um, property tenant, but we can also insure our room net tenants, which a lot of reference companies don't do at the moment. And we want to be the first to be able to do that. Okay, no, very good. Thank Hello. you. That well. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, one of the things you did say is obviously when um, you guys come round obviously to do valuations and everything, you said that you upload the report against your database to match against your clients. Why would you then, if you've got so many clients, thousands of clients as you're saying, why would you need to advertise my property onto Rightmove or Zoopla? Okay, so Rightmove or Zoopla reaches people all over the world. Mm -hmm. 
billions of people, millions of people. Our, our database at the moment, obviously, we're growing as a company, but our database reaches between hundreds and thousands, hundreds of people, or maybe thousands of people. It, you know, it would be one day we want to be in a position where we don't have to rely on right move and Zoopla and X and whatever and whatnot. But right now, they simply reach millions of people all over the world. We don't. Um, also, it's very, very important to rent the landlord's property as quick as possible. Um, you know, just by using our database, we might not be able to rent it as quickly as somebody who has right move and Zoopla because they simply can reach more tenants than we can. Um, so that's why we use both. Okay, that's fine. I'm just. Just because you said you had like over a yeah. large yeah we have a large clients. and we want to grow we want to grow it you know one day we as I said we don't want to have to rely on Mike Move and Zoopla and we're going to keep growing our clients we're going to keep making relationships with um, different um, relocation agents we're going to keep making rela um, um, relationships with different companies that want to um, rent with us directly mm -hmm. and just keep keep building our database um, but for now we we can't compete in terms of size with Right Move or course. Zoopla or or Prime Location. Um, so, you know, in order to make sure that the, the landlord gets the quickest possible service, we're going to go through every avenue to be able to reach as many um, clients as possible or tenants or applicants as possible. Okay, that's good. Cool. And on average, how many deals would you say um, the company does a month? I'd say the company does um, anything between um, 50 and 60 deals a month ov overall. In the, uh, in, in the whole, whole of the UK um, and we are hoping um, that you know by this time next year we can look into going international as opposed to just um, UK based okay. um, so you know hopefully we, we, we achieve those num you know we achieve that of course so how many like uh, lettings managers and negotiators roughly do you have um, at the moment we have I, I'll be honest I can't tell you exactly what the numbers are per right. But I can tell you that in total, we have um, about 300 people working um, for the company. Um, most of them being lettings negotiators. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say probably 70% um, of them are ne lettings negotiators and um, the rest are managers. Um, at the moment, we are recruiting um, about 40 to 50 lettings negotiators across um, the board um, per month. And um, we are started to recruit about 30, we're trying to recruit about 30 managers a month to support those letters negotiators growth. Um, before we used to work with third party um, estate agents, um, you know, um, yeah, third party estate agents. But within the next two years, we want to just be able to work with the estate agents, the, nego the lettings managers that we develop to be able to support our lettings negotiators growth. Okay, sounds very good. Thank you very much.